A little bit today and the snow is just about holding onto the hills around here although that horrible sludginess is uh, starting to come where everything turns a bit brown anyway today it's a storytelling uh, session where we hear from the words of Thomas Barlow this time it's part two of a picnic at Woodhead and uh, if you haven't listened to part one I'd suggest you nip back to last Saturday's. But if not, if you're already up to date, then let's find out what happens on that very cold, wet, maybe not going to plan kind of walk in June 1867. What happens next? Here's Cordelia Howard. A Picnic at Woodhead by Thomas Barlow, part two. Hunger appeased and the cloth removed, vagrant fancy unreproved to pleasure the soul of her resources scanned and found that a feast lay near at hand, a feast of beauty rarely seen by such as dwell amid the scene of man's ambitious ups and downs the restless heart of the noisy towns. He surely must be an artist planned, the sight of the buildings as they stand for none but a soul of cultured taste could have chosen the spot and so have placed the windows opening on a view at once to art and nature true, though less of art and more of nature characterises its leading feature. Down from under the window rolls a sloping mead whose brink controls a mountain stream which seems to the eye like a streak of foam as it ripples by. The stream is fringed on its nether bank with bosky herbage tall and rank. Now behold, a sudden gleam of sunshine sweeps the vale. The stream caught in a moment, o'er oh, its bed, glides like a line of silver thread. The trees too quickly change their hue as the fitful sunlight glances through. The quivering branches couch and strain bent by the force of wind and rain, and swiftly up the green hillside, seeing the flitting shadows glide, till stream and trees and vale and hill seem to obey some secret will. The scene is so intensely bright, our eyes can scarcely bear the sight. It seems as if twere a vision given to reveal the glorious light of heaven. Tis past, a dark and sombre shade, succeeding leaps athwart the glade. The glorious vision is deranged, and in a moment all is changed. The scene has lost its heaven-like bloom, and all is wrapped in cheerless gloom. The wind and the rain still hold their sway, yet we despair not of the day. For though reluctantly indoor bound, the song and jest went merrily around. The story was told, the poem recited, which to the company was indicted. And to put life in each nimble foot, Joshua drew forth his enchanting flute. Now two mountain maids appeared, took up the carpet, the room was cleared. Not being scrupulous, not over nice, partners selected in a trice. And while Joss did merrily flute it, we did just as merrily foot it. Round and round retire, advance, in the mazy country dance, 
waltz or polka, to and fro on the light fantastic toe, till walls and windows seem to reel like the giddy round of fortune's wheel. An hour spent thus, but a change in the weather. The clouds were dispersed and the sun on the heather. We bent to the impulse which hurried us there, in spite of all weathers, rough, rainy or fair. In a moment prepared, we were off and away, with spirits as light, for our hearts were as gay as the lambs that were bleating on every height and scouring the valleys with boundless delight. Our way led us down by the bridge of the brook, where the angler we saw was still playing his hook. In his creel, two small fishes were all he had caught, towards making the sum of the pleasure he sought. For this he averred with his ultimate wish, yet its cruel result was the death of the fish. We left him preparing to follow the stream, and turned to pursue a more innocent theme, a converse with nature. Whoever suggests the most exquisite pleasure to innocent breasts. A bend in the lane soon revealed to our view a grove of tall trees of as delicate hue as June ever brings. Long, lusty and broad, their pendulous branches were bent with their load of twinkling leaves. While snowy and fair, late hawthorn blooms breathed on the cool mountain air. From many a wild bush in the rambling fence, an odour as grateful to soul as to sense. And the song of the brook from the depth of the grove came soft, sweet and low as the coo of a dove. A rise in the brow brought the vale more in sight, with a group of slim birches that stands to the right, their slight wavy outline and soft pencil grace lend a ladylike charm that enriches the place. In easy enjoyment our path we pursue, each step in advance still enlarging our view. Above us the moorland, dark, dreary and wild. Below us the valley, sweet, pastoral and mild, with slopes intersected by numerous rills that channel their way from the tops of the hills, laughing and leaping with many a bound, filling the air with a tremulous sound of music that floats to the listener's ear like echoes of gladness from some higher sphere where beings celestial assembled in throngs adore the great giver of life in their songs. <laughs> 